Hello. One of the important topics we often discuss is metabolic acidosis in a sick newborn. And the question often arises whether we should consider treating it. So uh, in this presentation, I'll quickly go through some of the important aspects related to this. So acidosis, as we know, is pH which is below the normal range. And even though the range we define as less than 7.35, we consider urgent intervention if it goes below 7.2. I'll be discussing in the next couple of slides as to why this is the case. We have different causes of acidosis. We have metabolic acidosis, respiratory acidosis and mixed acidosis. So respiratory acidosis is related to lung disease or poor respiratory effort. And in this case, we have to treat the underlying pathology in the lung. You can review my video on pragmatic approach to respiratory distress in premature babies. Of course, in a term baby, there are different causes as well. And uh, the respiratory distress could be due to various factors like infection contributing and acidosis could result from that as well. So if you have a high PCO2, which is causing the pH to go down, uh, usually it's acute respiratory acidosis. And you can get uh, metabolic acidosis on top if the increased work of breathing is significant or hypoxemia is associated so we have lactate buildup so what are the causes of metabolic acidosis in the newborn so perinatal asphyxia is a very important factor and uh, you can review my detailed uh, video on asphyxia in newborn one of the commonest reasons in a premature baby is under perfusion under filling reduced fluid intake so they have a high insensible water loss and this may lead to a relative under perfusion so uh, this is one of the factors where you may consider a saline bolus hypothermia hypoglycemia hypoxia all are associated with acidosis if they are severe and as i mentioned in the previous slide worsening lung disease with inadequate support can lead to increased work of breathing reduced uh, oxygen perfusion to the tissues and uh, lactate increase causing vicious cycle it's usually mixed acidosis in severe respiratory distress sepsis of course uh, can cause uncoupling of the oxidative phosphorylation and um, poor tissue perfusion can be a factor as well the same happens in necrotizing enterocolitis where uh, third spacing and under perfusion can be a factor as well as the sepsis like manifestation can be a factor in both sepsis and nec we may have suppressed cardiovascular function as well uh, heart disease presents with shock due to various factors and any shock can contribute to metabolic acidosis. Anemia, if there is reduced oxygen carrying capacity, you may have acid buildup because there's less oxygen reaching the tissues. The heart has to function more, the respiratory system has to function more. I'll be discussing inborn errors of metabolism in the next slide and I'll probably plan a separate uh, lecture on the topic. There is already a video by uh, Dr. Nuha in the channel. Renal injury, of course, leads to accumulation of the acid waste, which is meant to be excreted by the kidneys, and this leads to uh, increased anion gap metabolic acidosis. Bicarbonate can be lost excessively in the urine, especially in the premature babies who are not mature enough, and so this could contribute to uh, low bicarbonate level and acidosis. So this will respond to uh, replacing bicarbonate uh, over a period of time. So in terms of uh, inborn errors of metabolism, we have a few errors of metabolism which can lead to metabolic acidosis. And it's important when we have persisting metabolic acidosis that we include lactate, ammonia, and an anion gap measurement, uh, especially when the course suggests inborn error of metabolism. So the main groups of IEMs that present with severe metabolic acidosis include defects of pyruvate metabolism some of these are mitochondrial defects and other defects of the mitochondrial electron transport chain organic acidemias of course are part of the newborn screen and uh, usually it's uh, related to presenting by day three day four with significant acidosis and high ammonia maple syrup urine disease can also present with acidosis and we have defects of gluconeogenesis uh, galactose one phosphate uh, deoxidase defect and Galactose 1 phosphatase, glucose 1 phosphatase defect, 
um, pyruvate dehydrogenase complex defects and so on. So there are multiple factors and obviously if you suspect inborn error of metabolism, keep the baby NPO on IV fluids and consult a metabolic consultant. Now we'll quickly recap what we mean by anion gap. So we have the anions which is the chloride and the bicarbonate and the cations which is the sodium and the potassium. And uh, there are conditions where the uh, anion gap which is calculated as sodium and potassium added together minus the chloride and the bicarbonate. So this is the normal picture. And there are situations where the anion gap is maintained because bicarbonate is lost for example in the urine or uh, in the stools in diarrheal episodes but the chloride increases so there is hyperchloremia to compensate for the bicarb so the anion gap stays stable. There are situations where the anion gap is wide normally it's 10 to 16. If there is an increased anion gap that means uh, you have uh, other uh, anions which are present which are not chloride or bicarbonate and in this case Bicarbonate is low which happens with any acidosis, metabolic acidosis and we have uh, accumulation of lactate, renal metabolites, toxins, organic acids. So depending on underlying condition, I have a short video on metabolic acidosis which is linked to my talk on uh, blood gas analysis. I would refer you to that. There is an acronym mud piles to consider the different components which can go up but I am not going into the detail in this lecture. So how do we approach metabolic acidosis? So if the blood gas shows predominantly metabolic acidosis and the pH is below 7.2 and the basis, base excess is uh, less than minus 10, then definitely it is significant. So the baby needs close evaluation and assessment. So uh, vital signs, blood pressure, temperature, all of these should be assessed. We need to have our eye on what is contributing or what is causing to the, this metabolic acidosis. So we have to review the supportive measures, is the hydration adequate, is the respiratory support adequate, even if there is no respiratory acidosis, if the baby is recessing and is working more, that could contribute to the metabolic acidosis and the perfusion, the oxygen saturation, everything contributes as well. If there is underlying anemia, we have to assess if that is contributing. Is there infection, we have to consider antibiotics and uh, vasoactive medication if needed, uh, depending on the blood pressure and so on. Remember that the underlying cause and correcting the underlying cause is the most important aspect of any treatment of metabolic acidosis and bicarbonate is purely a temporizing measure. Many times it's driven into us at the moment we see pH less than 7.2, we have to give bicarbonate. That's not the right approach. You may be able to act, intervene by correcting the underlying factor. For example, if it's a tension pneumothorax which is causing hypotension and your ventilation is actually cleared, the carbon dioxide you may still have. Uh, residual uh, metabolic acidosis. So you have to improve the pneumothorax drainage and uh, correct it. If the baby has underperfusion, giving a fluid bolus may be adequate. You may not give bicarbonate. We'll be looking at the next uh, couple of slides on why we need to avoid bicarbonate. In the extreme premature babies, they continue losing bicarbonate in the urine along with sodium. So this is the late hyponatremia or what we used to call the late metabolic acidosis in the preterm babies. We do give higher sodium load in the TPN in the preterm babies, titrating it for the requirements. And this usually takes care of the bicarbonate loss, but sometimes in the extreme premature babies, we give supplemental bicarbonate as well. So. Uh, Avoid the bicarbonate treatment unless it's essential and if needing treatment use a smaller dose and titrate. So it's better to give a half correction and repeat the gas after an hour. Uh, so it allows time for the other measures to take impact. And bicarbonate correction, the reason we avoid giving it is because it can uh, re release CO2 and CO2 crosses the blood brain barrier quickly and goes intracellularly quickly. So it may have a paradoxical impact of worsening the acidosis intracellularly as well as a cerebrospinal uh, increased acidosis which may uh, depress the sensorium. So remember that uh, rapid correction before you correct the respiratory acidosis with bicarbonate is not recommended. So correction is considered to avoid the cardiovascular effects of severe metabolic acidosis. So this is the reason why we don't like a pH below 7.2. It's not clear cut whether it's 7.1 or 7.2 and each baby's threshold may be different. So we have to balance it. So it's not a magic number that the moment it goes below 7.2, we have to correct it. So we have to look at uh, the clinical picture of the baby. If it's uh, 
If the baby is hemodynamically compromised, if the baby is on inotropes, you may have a threshold of 7.2. But if the baby is relatively stable, you can wait till 7.1 even. So between 7.1 and 7.2 is where the cardiovascular function is pH dependent and Below 7.1, of course, it will definitely fall. So you can justify giving bicarbonate if the other measures don't work or the baby is showing features of uh, not coping. And as I mentioned, altered sensorium can be associated with the drop in pH and especially if you give the bicarbonate without uh, appropriate respiratory support, intracellular acidosis may worsen and this also affects the sensorium. And one of the important factors to remember is that a compensatory mechanism for acidosis is a shift in the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve to the right, which means the oxygen is released more easily to the tissues to reduce the tissue hypoxia. And when you give bicarbonate and you bring the pH up, you are going to lose this benefit. So keep that in mind that again, respiratory support and oxygenation is important before you jump to correct the metabolic acidosis, especially if you are using bicarbonate. So we need caution with the use of bicarbonate uh, and these are the reasons we discussed the increase in PCO2, the intracellular and CNS acidosis. There is potential risk of hypernatremia because uh, sodium bicarbonate has one millimole of sodium for each millimole of bicarbonate. So you have uh, high sodium going into the baby as well. And the osmolarity of the solution is high even though we'll be using diluted bicarbonate still it's a hyperosmolar solution. And in a premature baby, hyperosmolar solutions injected can increase the risk of IVH as well. Hypokalemia can happen due to the shift in the acid-base balance. And we can have impairment in oxygen delivery, which I explained, shift in the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve to the right, which is being reversed by the bicarbonate. So there is no role for routine fluid bolus just because you see metabolic acidosis, but if there is a possible underperfusion, uh, you consider one bolus of 10 ml per kilo normal saline. Uh, don't give too much of fluid, especially in a premature baby, because you have a higher chance of PDA opening up, and excess fluid is always associated with BPD risk and NEC risk as well. So be careful with fluid boluses in the premature babies. In perinatal asphyxia setting as well, we don't know how the renal function is going to respond. More than 10 ml per kilo saline is to be avoided unless you are sure that you need and uh, POCUS is available, functional echocardiography, most of us are able to do it. So do the echocardiogram before you consider more than one bolus and don't rush to give the bolus. Many times a baby with the cord pH which is low with metabolic acidosis who is otherwise well, if you give it time they tend to improve on their own. So just monitor the blood sugar, make sure the temperature is maintained and repeat the gas, most of them just improve. So we give the saline and attribute it to that, but even if you don't give the saline, it will still correct itself. And uh, if you give multiple saline boluses, you have extra chloride load going into the baby as well. So that's one aspect to remember. And uh, if uh, bicarbonate is used, uh, please remember that uh, infant's ventilation is adequate. As I mentioned, the paradoxical uh, CO2 release, intracellular and CNS acidosis effect is there. And the hyperosmolar solution should be diluted, 1 is to 2 or 1 is to 4, and infused slowly. Uh, normally, we have 8.4% solution, so 1 millimole in 1 ml. Diluted to 4.2%, which is what we use in newborns as a standard, as a minimum. You can double dilute to 1 is to 4 as well. And in this case, once it is 4.2%, we have 1 millimole in 2 ml solution. The dose during resuscitation, you are not going to wait for the blood gas, so you give 1 to 2 ml per kilo of 4.2% uh, uh, solution, so 0.5 to 1 millimole per kilogram, and you give it over 30 minutes. Uh, if there is a blood gas available and you have the base de deficit uh, calculated, so you can use 0.3, which is the volume of distribution, times weight in kilogram, and uh, multiply that by the base deficit. You divide it by 2 for the half correction, as we discussed, we prefer to give a half correction, but if the severe acidosis is extreme, you can give a full correction. And we often face babies who have pH of 6.9, 7, who are very sick, who are not responding to inotropes. You've given them steroids, uh, you've given them bicarbonate, nothing seems to work. So these are the babies where they have extreme situations, extreme shock, extreme sepsis, 
where there is uncoupling of the oxidative phosphorylation and worsening metabolic acidosis. So most of the time, your management is not going to be successful, whatever you do for these babies. Unfortunate that they reach that situation. So whatever you give, it's not going to help, but try your best in managing the situation. And these are babies where you can consider a full correction instead of half correction. If you are giving a half correction, you review the blood gas within one to two hours and look at the other supporting aspects as we discussed as well. Uh, so remember that sodium bicarbonate reacts with the number of medications, so you have to be very careful with the drug-to-drug -drug interaction. Uh, calcium can precipitate, so calcium-containing solutions should not be given. Many antibiotics precipitate, uh, penicillin group can precipitate. So we have to be very careful and flush the line carefully after you give the bicarbonate as well. Uh, catecholamines uh, should not be given simultaneously in the same line because it will inactivate, the bicarbonate will inactivate the catecholamine. So we need extra access if a baby needs bicarbonate in most situations. And we discussed in the extreme preterm babies with urinary loss of bicarbonate. They have a pH which is in the 7.2, 7.25 range and the basic is tends to be minus 6 to minus 10. If the lactate is normal and the baby is otherwise well, you can either monitor or if there are other factors, you can give a dose of bicarbonate. If they are on full feeds, you can give orally or you can give in the umbilical arterial catheter as well. So heparin uh, is stable with bicarbonate, so we can give uh, bicarbonate as part of the heparin solution that goes through the umbilical arterial line. So we use that in the extreme premature babies in the first week to two weeks, depending on the blood gas picture, only if they need it. Acetate in the TPN can help to improve the bicarbonate in this group because acetate is converted to bicarbonate in the liver as well. So it's a, a source and increasing the acetate may help this metabolic acidosis. We discussed TAM previously and it's not readily available. It's often trometamine. It's, uh, it's a base and it corrects uh, the pH similar to bicarbonate. However, it doesn't have the CO2 releasing effect, so it can be used in mixed acidosis situations where the respiratory acidosis doesn't correct quickly. However, uh, I've not used it because of the lack of availability in many settings. So uh, this is a quick overview of uh, metabolic acidosis, especially in relation to correction. I'll share a link to the playlist on uh, blood gas analysis, which I discussed covering some of the aspects related to metabolic acidosis as well. And uh, I'll be preparing a video on inborn errors in addition to the one that's already there on the channel. So I'll link that as well. Thank you.